and uh, a lot of people have had uh, designs that interact with other devices. We thought it would be kind of cool to have something that helps you bond with your fellow man. So uh, we made a two-player hangman game in the spirit of human competition. All right, so uh, like David said, it's a two-player hangman game. Um, basically, uh, the requirements for it were to display kind of a welcome startup message. Um, and it's basically going to prompt uh, for a 14, uh, up to a 14-character word uh, from what you get from the keyboard or player one. Um, and then once uh, that's inputted to the board, um, then the second player will get to guess uh, using the keyboard which characters are in it just like a normal hangman game. Um, you get up to eight guesses before you're hung. Uh, and we use the LCD to display an UR, which we'll get to in a minute. So if the round is won, um, like the, the, if the word's guessed correctly, then it displays which player won. Um, otherwise, it'll tell the player that they failed. Um, and then it switches turns between the two players. Um, and we, we tried to implement as many options as possible. Like um, you can repeat the round. Um, it tells you the score after each round, and uh, it will it prompts you after the set of two turns if you guys want to keep playing again or not. Yeah, so going off of that, you can either type Y or N for yes or no uh, for if you want to play again. Uh, if you type Y, it will basically just repeat back to the, the process of uh, inputting um, another word and guessing, and it will go through two more rounds. If you hit no, um, it will basically uh, tell you which player won, say good game, and then It'll say press enter to, if you want to start a new game, and then it'll loop back through the game. So here's a block diagram that looks a lot better on paper than up here. Um, <laughs> this, uh, we use the UART to interface with the PS2 keyboard. Um, that's what is used to interact with the, with the game. Um, and then we have three, a set of three GPIOs, two going to the LCD, like in the previous lab, and one going to the LEDs. Um, all right, so this is our software uh, block diagram. We kind of just went over it, but uh, it, start, it starts, it goes to the welcome screen, and then it'll uh, start first with uh, player one inputting um, on the keyboard, or player two inputting the word on the keyboard, um, the secret word, I guess, and then after that, it'll take input from player one, and they'll guess up to eight times. If they get, it, if they get a guess right, um, it'll go back and keep let them keep entering until they get the entire word right, or if they guess wrong, it'll let them guess wrong eight times before the game's over. Um, and then it'll switch players so that it'll keep score, basically. Uh, and then after two rounds, it'll prompt if they want to continue playing or stop right there, and then it'll display the score. And, uh, or if they want to play a new game after that, they can do that as well. So, um, yeah, so we used uh, the LCDs, the LEDs, and the keyboard. Um, and uh, they communicate using the UART Lite IP4. Uh, that's the big keyboard at least. And then also we had to implement a two-dimensional lookup table um, to source scan codes and ASCII conversions for, uh, for the keyboard. That's just like so you can take the scan, the scan codes and then translate them into the actual keys. Um, in addition to that, um, we used the LEDs to display the scan codes. At first, we kind of kept it there for testing, but it kind of looks cool, so we just kind of kept it. And uh, yeah. And then, so we, we mainly just uh, to implement uh, our design, we used a lot of conditional statements and while loops in order to check the scan codes uh, against our lookup table and to kind of keep track of what state we're in for the game. Um, so a lot of if statements, a lot of for loops. Um, we had a lot of counter variables also to help keep track of which state we were in uh, if they want to start a new game. Um, and then we actually, in order to display it on the LCD, we had to create custom characters, which we used to kind of um, create the gallows that they'll be hanging from and the person. Um, so we had to write um, basically he eight hex values to an address eight times in order to create a custom character that we could then output onto the LCD. Yeah, and then the interesting thing with that too is um, the, the Piedmont CLP can only hold uh, eight 5x8 custom characters, and we actually needed quite a few more than that. And so we had to have our own like special lookup table that we would um, dynamically like uh, re, re, uh, recreate, recreate um, each character. the, the characters as, as we were going. 
So uh, for our integration and testing, we basically started off simple with the baud rate, uh, hooked up our keyboard to the oscilloscope, um, the clock on the keyboard, and then got our uh, baud rate. Uh, we originally started off with an incorrect baud rate, so we were getting weird scan codes and nothing was really working. Uh, but we, we got that figured out using the oscilloscope, which is pretty easy. Um, after that, we created uh, 20 customized or custom characters. Like David said, the the LCD can only hold up to eight, so we have like about four permanent custom characters, and then the other four are actually um, created as we need them on demand. Um, so we had about 20 total, um, and like we mentioned before, you write, uh, we write hex values to eight different addresses within the CG RAM in order to create just one character. Um, and then we also, uh, because we didn't do this in any previous labs, we had to uh, change the address for the LCD in order to start writing on the bottom uh, half of the LCD, or the bottom row, so we had to change the cursor to the bottom left of the LCD. Uh, after that, we set up the UART uh, light according to the data sheet that was online, um, and then put the, the, the one pin into our UCF file, which is basically the uh, receive bits and the zero input to the uh, data bit of the PS2. Um, and then, like we mentioned before, we had to create a 2D lookup table, so it would basically uh, do our conversion for us between ASCII and scan codes. Um, we used the LEDs originally to troubleshoot our scan codes and just to see if it was entering certain loops and whatnot, which we ended up actually keeping for our final design. Um, and lastly, we just played a lot of Hangman this week to make sure all our bugs were gone and verify that everything was working. So that's what it was. <laughs> and then uh, next we have the demo. So it's going to start off uh, just saying, welcome to Hangman with our custom characters. Are you ready to play? And then it's going to say, player one's turn to guess. So player two, I'll be player two. I'll type in a word which David won't be looking at. So I'll just enter hello. And then if I want, I can hit backspace if I made a mistake and I can just start over. Or to uh, submit the word, you can just hit the enter key. And then uh, basically it'll show up with um, the amount of underscores, so five underscores in this case. And if you for letters. One, yes, it'll display it at the bottom, and the uh, person will slowly be built on the gallows. Um, if you happen to know the word, it's pretty easy. So then when he types in the right word, it'll just say player one uh, wins that round, and then he'll type in a word for me. And then <clears throat> I'll just get this one wrong so we kind of see what goes on. So I have up to eight guesses, so that was my eighth guess. So it'll say player two fail, and then it'll keep score. So David's beating me one nothing, and then it'll ask if we want to play again for more rounds. It's a um, yes, and we'll keep the scores if we, going. Yeah, if we say yes, it'll go back to the beginning and keep the scores. Uh, we're just going to say no here for the sake of time. And so it'll say uh, player one wins, and then press enter to play again, and then it'll start over. That's your demo. Any questions?